Hi, in this video we will test uh, one additional functionality of our ESP32 uh, custom development board and that is actually this uh, RGB LED that is uh, added in addition to USB Type-C in order to have multiple indications or multiple states. So, for example, instead of having only one uh, status LED with uh, uh, one color that basically can indicate something that is on or off, or we have, for example, blinkage uh, possibilities, here we have a choice of, uh, of indicating multiple colors and that LED also can be, uh, can be controlled to, to blink. So I think with simply adding some uh, uh, some fully addressable uh, LED RGB, we can have multiple options of controlling the status of, of our, our IoT device. So, for example, if you can imagine now we can set, for example, red color when our device isn't connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, it can be green color, color when it's connected and, for example, when it has uh, communication to the internet but not uh, not connection to the server it can be for example purple and with these multiple options we now have possibility to indicate as much as you would like so now let's first check is uh, is our development board working and is connection between our ESP 32s2 and our our uh, fully addressable RGB actually correct so let's begin and of course i found uh, one thing that uh, wasn't working correctly and then i wanted to uh, investigate and let's uh, let's uh, uh, check it together so i recorded this uh, this image of uh, our custom esp32 development board and i noticed something strange then uh, when uh, when we have this port plugged in and uh, just with a pray uh, when we press uh, reset or boot button, our uh, actually uh, regular uh, LED is uh, blinking, which shouldn't be the case. So, if we investigate a bit more, actually that uh, red uh, LED is actually the status diode for uh, for 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 our power supply. Uh, so that basically indicates that we have the valid uh, voltage on on the, that we have valid 3.3 volts and what what can this mean so uh, it means that uh, our led will reset if we don't have uh, enough of voltage difference between uh, anode and cathode of our diode when we are pressing our button we are pulling this 3.3 uh, volt rail down so let's see how we connect our buttons so this seems okay, but for some reason, when we connect, uh, uh, close this, so for example, put or reset, in either case, we were getting this 3.3 volts pulled, pulled down. I think 10k is, uh, is a good amount of resistance here in order not to happen, but let's double check, uh, let's double check our PCB layout as well. Of course, I couldn't find anything wrong. Uh, within PCB layout, so because these circuits are located here and they are, let's say, somewhat isolated, so basically we need just to check. So we have uh, this um, this track to ground. We have this uh, ground track, which is here. So from our button, and we have this enable. Enable is going to enable, and uh, we have this R6 resistance. It's going up to. 3.3 uh, volts. I think everything is okay on on this side as well. The same way is done for 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 uh, boot button. But then I noticed that I made some some stupid uh, stupid mistake inside actually uh, bomb file. What I mean by this? So actually, I have by accident selected these two and a couple of other uh, resistance to be actually zero. So exactly because of that when we press uh, press button actually it will it will close uh, co close connect uh, with uh, our 3.3 volts and ground and because of that we have this voltage drop on our voltage regulator and of course not, nothing worked so after a short operation of uh, replacing the resistors i think that we have now our working board 
And now let's see did our board survive this operation. Okay, this is a good sign. So we have now dimmer uh, D1 LED lighting up because we increased the resistance of R1. But now let's try to press the boot button and then reset. So now our LED is not not resetting when we press this. So we are not pulling 3.3 uh, volts to the ground anymore. So this is uh, good. But now let's try to put uh, our board into boot mode press boot press reset release reset release boot and exactly this now we go to uh, device manager we should see our esp32s2 showing up and now we should actually enter our programming mode and for example if we now try to check uh, arduino id uh, we should see here that we have actually a uh, board native USB and the port that we have our COM ESP32 S2 dev mod model board and that we can upload something like this. So let's try. So we are downloading our code and everything is fine until we have something like this but uh, as you know this is okay because i didn't want to implement this automatic reset or in, in in my development board so in order for this i simply need to press on re uh, only reset button one time and then we are okay then we basically have now the different com port which is not now our usb32 not in programming mode and now if we just simply check on tools and port now we have our uh, com4 and if we select this and go to the serial monitor we can see now our data that is sent uh, hello world on every two seconds so but that this is uh, this is programming with arduino id now we will try to use uh, vs studio code but uh, until this point, uh, point we uh, determined that our push buttons are working, that our power supply is working correctly, and that basic functions of our ESP32 S2 is actually correct. Now, in addition to this, we have this RGB LED, which will that's next, and pretty much the same uh, thing is happening on uh, platform I/O. So it's simply uh, by creating the project that is actually using ESP32 S2. And in main, uh, main C, we are simply uh, 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 compiling the same code. And then when we're going to platform IO, by simply selecting upload, it will automatically, uh, automatically select uh, uh, our uh, port. So auto detect port three, and it will download code and basically break at the same point because we don't have this reset option. So let's now uh, reboot our ESP32. Okay, we now see uh, this in addition, and now let's 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 select the monitor. So we have COM6 now, and we have our thing also working. So I think with this we can uh, we can have uh, we have good basics in order to start our our uh, testing of uh, fast LED library with ESP32 S2 and with our custom development board. Uh, but before that, uh, and before we are able to test this uh, fast LD library, I noticed one additional mistake. Uh, so as we designed, as I designed uh, this uh, fully addressable RGB, it's actually using uh, status LED as a control input pin. And if we if we check that this status LED pin is actually connected to pin of our ESP 32s2 on 24 pin and it's actually io21 now i think everything is great so we basically have this line here that is going to here then goes to the bottom side then goes strict to 24 pin so this is okay we don't have any any problems here but 
the problem was that actually our diode uh, D3, D3 wasn't lighting up and wasn't receiving, let's say, this communication here. First, uh, first debug steps that I took is actually switched uh, this pin to be just as uh, general uh, input uh, output I/O basically uh, and uh, set this line to 3.0 volts, then to 0 volts, and basically just measure these voltages here. And it was fine. Then, basically what I determined that actually the problem was inside inside internal configuration of the pin, actually, because if we just check for IO21, IO21 is actually just a generic GPIO uh, pin without uh, any any faster components so it doesn't have uh, SPI communication part it doesn't have uh, for example clock output part so it's uh, too slow in order to transfer communication to fully addressable RGB and because of that it's actually wrong pin to use in this application it's good for uh, general purpose but for us it's a bit too slow then I wanted to switch from this pin to actually IO33, uh, which is on pin uh, 27 of our ESP32, in order to have uh, this this LED working. This has actually this uh, SPI uh, communication out, so it should be fast enough. In our design, basically, yeah, this will just change the places. Here, it should go from 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 21st to uh, but but what should be our changes now in our design so first we just need to stop this connection from 24th uh, pin to our LD and that's basically uh, uh, that's basically just stop connection connection somewhere around this line easiest for me was to just drop this line on the back side and I will add the image here so just a little cut on the bottom side trace and broke the connection between uh, this part and our status LED input data line now we just needed to externally add the connection for our uh, GPIO 33 or pin 27 so from uh, from this pin here we need additional connection to, to this and that is done with the simple jumper wire on the top side and that is it now we can test our uh, fast LED library and after all the tr trouble we have the simple sketch that will actually just initialize only only one uh, LED control pin is set to our uh, 32 so it's only for develop for our custom development board uh, brightness level is set to uh, 40 and now we are using the standard fast uh, fast led library with uh, add led with our ld count of one setting the brightness and actually we are using built-in uh, rainbow function which will create the rainbow effect for us and basically this is it after and after uh, compiling and downloading our code our uh, full addressable LGB uh, lit up and we have uh, this nice rainbow effect so after some time we have every functionality of our custom uh, ESP32 S2 development port uh, tested and we can now continue with our IIT projects that's all see you in the next video